Hey everyone, this is Stephanie Wong, Cloud Developer Advocate. We are back with our own Google fellow, Eric Brewer. Last time we talked about his last 10 years of building infrastructure at Google and Kubernetes influence in the space. He mentioned how he is now focusing on creating processes for more secure software supply chains. So Eric, how are you doing today? Fantastic, it's good to see you again. Good to see you too. All right, so let's dive right into it. Last time we were talking about supply chains for software. Now you were talking a little bit about the risk space and companies tied to it. So how is the supply chain risk assessment happening today? Why is the risk so large? Well, I think there's a, a lot we need to do here as an industry and it's, it's beyond the power of just Google. In fact, it's, it's really quite a challenge for the whole planet. But I would say the first thing we need to decide is, you know, which projects do we want to actually bet on? Because in some sense, any project you're betting on for security, you'd like to make sure that there are people that care about that project and are paying attention to it and will fix security vulnerabilities as they arise. Because in practice, 99% of our vulnerabilities, literally 99%, are not in the code that you write for your application. They're in this very deep tree of dependencies, some of which you may know about, some of which you may not know about. And so first thing is, what are those dependencies? Which ones are well-maintained? Which ones are not? We're starting to present that kind of information, but take it up a level. It's actually going to be important for all industries, industries to try to understand what pieces of software do we want to bet on and why? And what do we do about the ones that are not quite up to par yet? Yeah. And whether some companies know it or whether they have come to an acceptance of it, Kubernetes has become the de facto way to build and deploy many, many applications today, or at least that's the North Star for many organizations. And now it has several hundred software library dependencies, right? So what are we at Google Cloud doing to help reduce those vulnerabilities? Well, there's tons. As a course, CNCF, we started to, as a home for Kubernetes, and it's part of the Linux Foundation, which we also are, are big fans of and funders of. I personally helped create Open SSF, Open Source Security Foundation, that, in my mind, started in 2019, although I think it actually launched in early 2020. But that foundation is, in fact, explicitly targeted open source security and the supply chain. It was created for that purpose. And fortunately, it was created before this stuff really became so visibly bad. But I could see it coming, and that's why we needed to, to kind of start early. The other thing I would say is that you know Google has a long history of contributing to open source. And in our recent uh, response to the White House, we committed another 100 million to open source uh, in the coming years. And it's important to set that precedent because the, the repairs we need, there's a lot of mundane work to do to make open source as secure as we need it to be. And it's not fair to say, oh, you know, volunteers and others, please work harder. Right? That's, that's not going to be the sustainable path. And in fact, I'm arguing for federal funding as well. For open source security, I kind of feel like we need to get to a, a sustainable model where the kind of ongoing work of security, which is you know not easy stuff, is actually financially supported, not just for this year when it's a crisis, but for the future. By the way, I think of it the same way as you think about other public infrastructure. Now, we passed a trillion dollars to, to spend on roads and other things in the U.S., uh, you know, Open source is a public infrastructure also. And like all public infrastructures, it needs maintenance and support. And so we have to figure out how that's gonna work. It's not at all an easy thing, but I do think that is part of the path of the future. Yep, and it's really hard to predict that. And so I think having the secure processes in place from build to deploy is really key, especially as we've seen the detrimental work of adversaries coming to light. Now, can you talk a little bit about our contributions and the work that we've done in the open source space? What are some of the organizations and the projects that we've worked on? I'm a big fan, as you know, of kind of raising the level of abstraction over time. And that gives developers more leverage. It allows us to do more automatically on both the security side and the management side. And Autopilot is a great example of that. It's really, we will manage the nodes for you and your cluster, and you don't have to. And that is a security improvement, but it's also, frankly, just a toil improvement. Why do the toil of managing those nodes if you don't need to? Right? That's probably not why you're doing your, your, your Kubernetes job. You probably have something you'd like to do, like a, 
a business app or a website or, or data analysis. Focus on those things and uh, we can manage the nodes. And, and that general direction is, is the way it's going to go. We can manage more things over time, but they'll be the things that you don't want to manage yourself because it's a hassle. Exactly. And I do want to dive a little bit more into Google Kubernetes Engine and what we've been doing over the last couple of years. Uh, I, I know that we just had GKE's sixth birthday, actually. So why don't we go ahead and save that for the next episode? Thank you so much once again, Eric. And to everyone else watching, stick around because we are going to have more soon. Mm -hmm.